All right, you're good. Good evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Chain Breakers. We're a Christian recovery program that focuses on the road to recovery using the 12 steps. We use various recovery materials, including the Bible, which is the living word of God. It is the most important resource that we have in our life. And then we filter the AA Big Book, the NA Basic Text, the Celebrate Recovery, and other relevant resources through the Bible. We want to make it very clear that we're not an AA or an NA meeting, and we are not affiliated with either fellowship. With many of us being members of these fellowships ourselves, we have a great respect for their traditions. We endorse them, but they do not endorse us. They are gracious enough to let other groups use their literature as long as the readings are kept intact, which is what we are doing. We also do not claim to be experts in the literature. We are just simply sharing our experience, strength, and hope with you and the things that we have learned along the way. The Chainbreakers experience allows you to be changed, transformed, and renewed. That's what it is, reconciling ourselves back to God Amen. through Jesus Christ. We are renewed by God working in our life. And as you work and study the 12 steps, the unpacking, you will step in to the future that God has planned for each and every one of us. Amen. We believe that through the 12 steps and the power of Jesus Christ, that we can be chain breakers. If you are not a Christian, please know that you are wanted and welcome here. We're going to pass around the basket for donations to pay for weekly expenses, including free literature and Bibles that we give patients when bringing our meetings into treatment centers for H and I. If you are watching online and you would like to donate, we put our give link in the chat that you will go take you directly to the church's donation page. Please just select Chain Breakers in the fun section. Every dollar helps, and we thank you for your contributions. Whether you can donate or not, we appreciate you being with us. Welcome everyone who is watching online. We welcome you here with us tonight. Feel free to put in the chat where you're watching from, and if you are new, so we can welcome you. Also, please hit the like and follow button so that we can so that you can get notified when we are having our meetings and please hit the share button if you are comfortable to help us share recovery and the gospel most importantly. We also invite you to like and subscribe onto our YouTube page on Thursday meeting. We'll post there on Fridays. We encourage sponsorship, mentorship, very very important. A sponsor is someone who will take you through the 12 steps. We also encourage you to get a list of phone numbers to help build a support network. It is not just a support network, it is a family. I truly believe that here. We are a family, so come join the family. If anybody would like a list of phone numbers, please raise their hand. Do we have any newcomers or visitors to the group that would like to introduce themselves? Yes. Um, Felix. Um, hey, Felix. Um, yeah, I'm... Um, I've been here before with uh, what's his name? Mike. Mike. Yeah, I've been here before with Mike. And I'm just happy, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to be back out here. It's been a while since I've been here. Um, but I, I enjoyed it being the last time I was here. And, and I know I'm going to enjoy it. Too, so thank you. Praise God. We thank you for being here. Felix. If you are willing and able to be a sponsor, please raise your hand and keep them up for a moment. If you need a sponsor, please talk with one of these people after the meeting or see us at the front, and we will help you get connected with someone. Any newcomers or visitors, if you would like someone to reach out to you, as we understand how hard it is to pick up that 1,000-pound phone, simply fill out the top portion of the card, and someone will get in touch with you. <clears throat> Don't remain silent. Don't isolate. This is not a necessity, as we respect your decision to be anonymous. It is just an option if you would like it. At the bottom of the cards on the table is a prayer request section. If you have any prayer requests, you can write them at the bottom of the card and place in the basket. And we will be praying for you throughout the week. If you have prayer, if you have prayer requests online, please simply put them in chat or PM us. We will write them down and pray for you. If you don't even have to put your name on it if you don't want to. We may not know who we're praying for. But God does, and we know that God hears and answers prayer here. 
And lastly, if you want to get involved, the commitment sign-up sheet is at the front table. Just put your name down. And if you don't want to get involved, get involved anyway. Hi, my name is Joshua, and I am a delivered addict and a child of God. Joshua. And I have with me... Al. Al. Recovering addict, child of God. Yeah, it's so good to have Al with us tonight. And I wasn't here last time. Me and my wife had a prior engagement, but I checked him out online, and he was just on fire for God. And you know that somebody just, just has that spirit of redemption where you know that their life has changed because what happens is, is when you receive that grace you're just so appreciative of it like you know uh, during bible study last night we talked about the the 50 and the 500 about being forgiven and we talked about mary who brought her alabaster box you know of ointment to god and she was just praying at jesus's feet and her tears and just washing his feet that's the way we're to come to god we're to come to god and really repent from our sins and just come to him and, and receive that free gift of grace and that's what i see uh in his life and Thank God for him. Uh, so step five, we're going over that we would admit to God, most importantly, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. You see what happens is that God already knows everything that we've done. He knows everything. But when we try to hold something back, we're actually keeping control from allowing God to really clean us from the inside out. When we just give everything God, to God in full honesty, then we allow him to work. And I don't want to, you know, stop God's hand on my life. So I just want to come to him with everything. So I just want to admit and be able to honestly just come to him so that he can free me from all of those things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The fifth step is the key to freedom. The key to freedom. It allows us to live clean in the present, sharing the exact nature of our wrongs, setting us free to live. And not only that, sometimes when you're working through it with your sponsor, you're able to have a different perspective of it, you know, because we actually get it out and we have somebody. And when you're working with a sponsor or a mentor, they're able to give you that outside perspective. You know, I know like me and my wife went to counseling and it really did help us early on in our mar marriage because we had an outside perspective that made us think about it in a different way. So sometimes the memories of these situations of th things that we've done wrong, you, you know, needs to come out into the light. So then we can actually see from them for what they really are. After taking a thorough fourth step, which is very hard for a lot of people, the fourth step really is hard, you know, writing down all these things. We deal with the contents of our inventory. We are told that if we keep these defects inside us, we're keeping them when we don't release them. They will lead us back to using. Mm -hmm. Holding on to our past would eventually sicken us and keep us from taking part in our new way of life. What we're doing is we're actually putting it into our subconscious. So we have to make the subconscious conscious and we're aware of these things so that we can remove them from our life. The awareness, the awareness is so important. If we are not honest, when we take a fifth step, we will have the same negative result that this honesty brought us in the past. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. No. Um, I just want to share a little bit about this first uh, paragraph here. Uh, the word freedom and uh, live clean in the present is in the first couple of sentences. Yeah. Um, you know, for and I'll share part of my strength, hope, and experience early on in recovery was that I was clean, but I hadn't yet I didn't have the power yet to change some of the lifestyle behaviors that I was acting out on mm -hmm. in recovery. And I'll even go on to say, as a Christian, mm -hmm. there were still things that God needed to peel out of my life. And I couldn't do it within my own strength. And I definitely wasn't going to do it keeping it in my own head. Yeah. I needed somebody. I needed to confess it to somebody, yes. share it with somebody, as we do with the fifth step, in order to, to expose it so that it would die. And it's going to talk about that. But expose the lies that I have bought into so that the, 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 in the exposure of light, that that can die. The, my behaviors that I still held on to, that I felt comfortable with. It was a part of me. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead. No, that's so important. I love that. Uh, step five suggests that we admit to God, admit to God what he already, already knows mm -hmm. to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. We do that after our fourth step. We look at our wrongs. 
We examine our behavior patterns. If we're not examining our behavior patterns, how can we change them? If we're not looking at them and really understanding them because we're really holding them still inside and we become comfortable in that area and navigating in that. One of the biggest lies the devil ever told me was that's just the way that you are, yeah. you know? And I, I thank God that I understand now who I am in Christ Jesus. And now I have the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to shed all mm -hmm. these things as he highlights this. Just like you shared about the light that he puts it, that the, the Holy Spirit is actually talks about the illumination. Mm -hmm. So he brings these things to light and then he convicts our heart, right? But there is no conviction without truth. And once we understand the truth of the things that we've been through, then comes the change. Then we're able to put them to the side and move forward. May I share them. something? Yes, please. Here, so in here it talks about, this is so, a, two words that I did not understand. The exact nature, right? It mentions the exact nature of our wrongs. I thought just acting out or, or a behavior I had was an exact nature. However, it wasn't. I found that um, even with years in recovery, a few years in recovery, I was sharing at a meeting in Patterson, New Jersey, right? Yeah. And, and I would share that I had done time in jail. I did time. And I shared that, but then, like, I started to get, I don't know if it was convicted or challenged. I don't know if I was there yet, but I only spent one night in jail, right? But I would, I would share because I wanted to be accepted I wanted to be accepted by my peers in recovery. So I wanted to, you know, you hear all these stories about guys doing time in jail and all this other stuff. And I wanted to be accepted by them. So I would say, yeah, I did time. I did time too. And then finally, like I had to get honest, I had to get to the exact nature because of my desire to want to be accepted, which I already was, right? Yeah. But, but, but the exact nature was that I just wanted to be accepted by people. But I, I portrayed this image I, mm. I, I was speaking out a lie to people so that I would be accepted. Like, and I, I, I didn't quite understand what, and I understand now, but that was, that's my example of an exact nature of some of my, my lies that I still bought into or believed, if that makes any sense. It makes so much sense. And when we start to do this unpack and we start to understand and identify, a lot of our issues come from not feeling like we're accepted. Mm -hmm. I know that was really big for me, you know, and especially with my father and my brother, I always felt like I'd never fit in. Mm -hmm. So I'm always searching to try to fit in somewhere. And Rob did an excellent job last night sharing his testimony on where things really start. But without doing the work, you can't really find out where this all started, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in your life. And it's very individual, but we can all really relate to a lot of the same things, just like you just shared. So it says that we'd have these behavior patterns, right? So we look at our wrongs. We're going to look at these things, even though they make us feel uncomfortable. And then sometimes as we analyze them, like I shared before, we start to understand a different perspective when, someone, when we share it with somebody because, it, you know, they're going to start to give you their feedback. Oh, wow. Maybe I was looking at that the wrong way, right? Mm -hmm. And then our behaviors. And then we started to see the deeper aspects of our disease or the obsession of our mind. The habitual behavior of just the pattern over and over and over again. That's what happens. It's controlling our mind. Now we sit with another person and share our inventory out loud. Getting it out in the open just like you shared, right? Our higher power, Jesus, <laughs> will be with us during our fifth step. We will receive help and be free. Be free to face ourselves and another human being. See, what happens is when you admit them to God, right, that what God already knows, you start to talk to him, then you, have, you feel more power to be able to share it with someone else. It seemed, seemed unnecessary to admit the exact nature of our wrongs, you know, to Jesus. Uh, God already knows that stuff. We rationalize, although he already knows. The admission must come from our own lips to be truly effective. You hear that? Must come from our own lips you know i think about uh adam and eve in the garden when they had first had you know when they first ate from the fruit of uh knowledge of good and evil right and uh as soon as they did they saw that they were naked and what do they do they start covering themselves up and then they hide and then this you know god comes into the garden and he says well where are you adam you don't think he knew where he was hmm. you don't think god knows right where you are Amen. you don't think god and he just wanted he to hear him say it hmm. Hmm. The admission must come from our own lips to truly be effective. 
Step five is not simply a reading of step four. For years, we avoided seeing ourselves as we really are. We were ashamed of ourselves and felt isolated from the rest of the world. Now that we have shame, had the shameful part of our past trapped, we can sweep it out of our lives if we face it and admit it. Hmm. If we would be tragic, it would, it would be tragic to write it all down and then shove it in the drawer. These defects grow in the dark and die in the light of exposure. Amen. Amen. How, how, many, how many times, how many of us, you know, while we were, we're out there in the world doing our thing, using and abusing and all this other stuff, um, how many times, like, I quit. Every time my drugs ran out, I quit. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm never going to do this again. I can't go through this again. I, I, you know, I, anyway, uh, only to wake up the next day and, and, and like almost just deny that that even happened the night before oh, yeah. to continue on to pick up where I left off and even worse. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, but you talk about, it, it talks about admitting, right? The first step. It's funny how we, we, I was sharing this the other night with somebody, we, we admit our powerlessness over the thing that controls us, right? Whatever yes. that is, you fill in your blank. We admit our powerless over it. And once we admit that we're powerless over it, when we're broken over it, once we admit it, all of a sudden we have, we, we gain a power over it instead of it having a power over us. Yes. Make sense? Yes. You know, so. That is so powerful. You know, when, when you shared that, uh, you know, about, you know, saying, I remember like I was a type of drug addict that as soon as I would get high, I would just be like, please God, please God, please God. And then as soon as it would wear off, boom, I wanted to get high again. You know, that was mm. like the way that it, it just had this like power over me, you know, and I never felt comfortable in my own skin in that way. And I just kept going back to, you know, uh, that release, but really until it had complete control over me, you know, because, you know, the, 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 the chains of addiction are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. Mm. You know, that's what happens, you know? And before we know, we're just caught up in all this stuff that we can't really break free, but that's what step four and step five really does. You know, these beginning steps are so important, but if you really want to just completely get all that weight off of you, completely release all those bricks that you've been carrying around, this bag that you've been carrying around, and you just keep putting this stuff in there, carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders, well, you know what, it's time to take that off. It's time to give it to God, and you do that by, by admitting uh, the exact natures of your wrong mm -hmm. to God and to somebody else. I had to do that in my recovery. Mm -hmm. Early on, it was a year in, and you know, I relapsed, and I hit it hard. You know? I, was just, I, I admitted it. I, told, I told, went to my pastor. I talked to him about it right away, so I was able to kill it. You know? Because as soon as you just want to isolate and stay to yourself, you know, that's where, it's gonna, where you're going to actually stay in that relapse. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's really good to tell on yourself. It really is to, sh to, to share it. Uh, before becoming, you want to read? Sure. Before coming to Narcotics Anonymous, we felt that no one could understand the things that we had done. Um, if that doesn't describe me, that was the biggest thing that kept me out there so long. Yeah. Was thinking that I was the only one that did the things I did. When everybody went home at at 11, 12, not everybody, but some of the people that hung out with us and then the other people that hung out with like us, like it was time to go out at 12, two, three o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know that you did that, but oh, yeah. I, I, I think you did. I listened to you <laughs> a couple of times. But um, the, the, this, the devil had me in a headlock believing. I believed that I was the only one that did the sick, nasty things that I did. And that kept me out there for so long until I came into recovery. And I'm sure it's going to talk about that. But when I came into recovery and I started hearing people share about the stuff that I did, I felt like, wow, this, this is home. As sick as it is, this is, this is home. Like as crazy as it was to share that, that stuff that, that we've done when we were out there, like I felt a sense of like, like wow. Like you too? Yeah. Like I'm not alone? Yeah. The devil's a liar? I'm like, wow, this, this is great. So um, what, what, a, what, a, what a, 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 a freeing or an unloading of a weight that I carry believing the lies that I bought into. Yeah. 
that were either put on me that I bought into that I, I just didn't I didn't know the truth when I came into recovery I I had for my first little my first 14 months a year and a half into recovery I didn't know Christ I didn't know Christ and by his grace he exposed himself to me yeah he I came to a, a I think I said this last time when I shared I came to an anonymous program and God broke his anonymity to me Ooh. personally yeah. and it, it, it's it's taken my recovery my, my spirit to a whole nother level whole nother level it's the difference between uh, being clean and recovering it is definitely there's one thing I want to share Go ahead. about what you shared like you said that you gave it power when you were believing right so how many how many of us are really believing a lie right but believe the truth about yourself mm -hmm. believe who you are in Christ you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus Amen. speak these words over your life and you'll see the power of it it's exactly what Jesus did when he was tempted when he was tempted by the devil mm -hmm. it's exactly what he did he brought truth he spoke the word Amen. and when you write that on the tablet of your heart when you gird it upon your neck you know it's ready as an arsenal to come against the way that the, the spirit of bondage wants to trap your mind and tell you that you know what you're no good or or you know uh you're gonna end up going back to where you were you know I, it's it's so powerful believing is so so powerful did you did, i mean you you realize we we need to realize that we are called righteous yes, yes. in christ in christ for those of us that have accepted christ as our lord and savior right we are called righteous, holy, blameless, a peculiar people. We are. We are. Amen. Yes, it says it. That's the word. But our true identity is only found in Christ. It's not the person who we think we are or think we were or who anybody else thinks I am or who my mother thinks I am or who my, my wife thinks I am. But who does Christ say that I am? We're children for those of us, again, I, I, I need to say that. For those of us that have accepted Christ, we are children. We've been adopted into his family. Like he adopted us when everybody else didn't want nothing to do with us. That's right. He adopted us. Yeah, and it says that in Romans chapter 8. He says, no longer the spirit, lowercase s, you know, no longer the spirit of bondage, right? That's what we all were at one point. Now we have the spirit of adoption. Amen. <laughs> Uppercase S. Yeah. The spirit adopts us into Amen. the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And that's what's so powerful. Amen. We feared that if we ever revealed ourselves as we were, we would surely be rejected. Most addicts are uncomfortable about this. We recognize that we have been unrealistic in feeling this way. Our fellow, of our fellow members do understand us. Yes. Amen. 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 There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing that's been done that, that you've done, that I've done, that Josh has done, that anybody has done that's never been done before. Yeah. No matter how nasty it might be, God knows it. He still loves you. He still loves us. Yes. He knows everything about us. I said it last time I was here. God is not mad at you. He is mad about you. Ooh. Yeah. He loves you so much. He says it in his, in his word. He says, behold what manner the love the Father has bestowed upon us that we will be called the sons and daughters of God. That's who you are. You are a child of God. And he's coming to receive you back into him, to himself. That's what he's doing. He says, let your heart not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my house there is many mansions. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. And if I told you, I'm coming back. Yeah. Coming back. Amen. He's coming back to receive us back to himself. Wow. And I, that's the blessed hope that I have in Christ. And that's why now I live a life in him. You know, turning from where I used to be. In, in Chronicles 7.14, it says that if you humble yourself and pray, then turn. Repentance, there it is. Turn from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. What happens then? He's going to heal your land. He's going to heal every part of your life. You know, for so long I lived as a double-minded man. And the Bible tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And that's what my life was about because I knew God up here, but I didn't have him in here. Oh. Because I was filling myself with the world. I was filling myself with all these temptations, you know. And just like I said, the, the drugs was really the beginning of it. Mm. You know, because once the drugs mm -hmm. were gone, the biggest, the, the, the real underlining factor was the lust. And it was the anger. 
The anger started at like five years old. The lust started at like 12, 13 years old, right? Then the drugs didn't come until after that. So really, if you think about it, that was the way things broke down. Once you removed the drugs, then I had to really focus and you know put a light on the lust issue. Mm -hmm. And then God removed that and brought me a beautiful wife, you know? Mm -hmm. And then the anger, which was like the real root of it. You know, just like Janet always says, I love her, uh, when she says that the, the, the anger isn't completely away, but the volume is definitely way, way turned down. And the way that you turn it down is by doing this unpacking, is by the fourth step, the fifth step, really just have being self-aware and analyzing, uh, you know, everything Amen. in your life. Amen. We must carefully choose the person who is to hear our fifth step. We must make sure that they know what we are doing and why we are doing it. Although there is no hard rule about the person of our choice, it is important that we trust the person. Only complete confidence in the person's integrity and discretion can make us willing to be thorough in this step. Some of us take our fifth step with, to with a total stranger, although some of us feel more comfortable choosing a member of Narcotics Anonymous. We know that another addict would be less likely to judge us with malice or misunderstanding. Amen. Only thing I have to say about that is that I am so grateful for, the, for the, the man that God put in my life early in my recovery that I went through the steps with. And um, he worked the steps, so he understood what I was doing when I was sharing this with him. And we would stop and we would pray and, and then I'd have to go back and I mean, I'd have to go back and we'd have to pray to keep going forward. Um, I'm going to touch base on that. Did in a, he help in a you bit. Um, get a different perspective of a lot of the situations? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's so important, you know, because sometimes we have a, you know, an, a, a, the wrong, you know, imagination or remembrance mm -hmm. of the memory of the things that we've gone through. So I think that's super, super important. I think a lot of us, we, we I know myself, I got, I got blinders. I can, I can only see, but, but this much. But if I have, you know, people around me that love me, that care about me, they can see, they can see behind the sides. Yeah. And they can see where I can't see. I can't see things coming sometimes. And I need, uh, I need accountability partners, mentors in my life to help me Praise do that. Praise God. Amen. Once we make a choice and are actually alone with that person, we proceed with their encouragement. We want to be definite, honest, Thorough, realize, honest and thorough, realizing that this is a life and death matter. Some of us tried to hide part of our past in an attempt to find an easier way of dealing with our inner feelings. We may think that we have done enough by writing about our past. We cannot afford this mistake. This step will expose our motives and our actions, our motives and our actions. We cannot expect these things to reveal themselves. Our embarrassment is eventually overcome and we can avoid future guilt. You know, I, 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 you know, looking back, I made a big mistake by, you know, telling myself, well, you know what, God, God understands. He, he, he knows, hmm. he knows my heart, you know, and then trying to compromise with God, right? And then I left the door and window wide open for him to wreak havoc in my life, you know? Um, so that's why it's so important, you know, for us to understand, bring that truth to light, you know. So we do not procrastinate. You know what procrastination actually is? Is when we distract ourselves with something else than what we're actually supposed to be doing. That's what procrastination is. Procrastination doesn't mean just going around in circles doing nothing. It's just when you get yourself busy doing something else than what you're really supposed to be doing. Right? I still do it, bro. <laughs> I, st I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for taking my inventory. <laughs> Praise God. We must be exact. Right? We want to be exact. We want to tell the simple truth, cut and dry, as quickly as possible. There is always a danger that will <clears throat> aggregate our wrongs. It is eventually dangerous to minimize or rationalize our part in the past situation. Mm. After all, we still want to sound good, 
right now, but we're taking that mask off, right? We're taking that mask off. And God has already forgiven us, right, when we come to him and ask for forgiveness. That's step three. When we receive Christ, we are forgiven for everything. But what happens is we still try to hold on to those things. I remember early on when I, you know, um, turned my life over to God and was really walking in obedience. I used to, like, question my salvation, you know, um, hmm. from before, right? Because because I was living double-minded. But what happens is I went like the prodigal son. I went back out into the world until I came back and said, you know what? I'll be your servant, Dad. Just take me back to be your servant. And when you do that, you know, he comes and he takes that robe and he puts it around you. Hmm. And he gives you back everything that the devil tried to steal from you. Not hmm. only that, you get double. Double yes. for your trouble. Mm -hmm. Right? Double. That's the promise. That's the promises in the word of God. It says we, he will restore the years that the locusts Ooh, have eaten, right? Joel chapter 2. Come on, baby. Yeah, man. Joel chapter yeah, 2. I was just reading that. That's how I know the Holy Spirit is in this Amen. place, right? Amen. You know what? We f f formally met just tonight. But before he came in, I literally was reading Joel chapter 2. Go study that when you go home because that's exactly what he's talking about. I'm, says, I'm glad I have my Bible <laughs> reference over here. My concordance. <laughs> Praise God. So addicts tend to live secret lives, right? We isolate, we live secret lives. For many years, we covered low self-esteem by hiding behind phony images, right? We talked about that, that we hoped we'd fool people. It wasn't fooling nobody. <laughs> Unfortunately, we fooled ourselves yes. more than anyone. Although we often appeared attractive and confident on the outside, we were really hiding a shaky, insecure person Woo. on the inside. The masks have to go. I didn't even know it was in there. To share our inventory as it is written, skipping nothing. Skipping nothing. When you really just, you know, take a day to just do it. You know, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't overthink it. But just take a day and just say, God, bring to remembrance everything that I need to write down. Then go. And, and handle it so that you're able to take that portion and be able to move past it. Now, if something else comes up later down the line, then you write it down again and you've already started it. So you already have the tools to be able to do it. And then you just pick up that phone and say, hey, I have this, this, and this listed. And now I want to go back and take care of those things and kill those things. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. We continue to approach this step with honesty and thoroughness until we finish. It is a great relief. How many of us want that relief, that release? To get rid of all of our secrets and to share our burdens of our past. Usually as we share this step, the listener will share some of his mm -hmm. or her story too, right? Mm -hmm. Huge, huge. Very important. We find that we are not unique. <laughs> We're definitely not unique. We see by the acceptance of our confident, confidant that we can be accepted just as the way that we are. We are accepted just the way that we are. Man, my sponsor and I, when, when, when we were going over the fourth step, doing our fifth step, we, I, I think I said this already, but we Say it cried. Again. Yeah. We laughed. We cried some more. We hugged. Like, he just, he held me up. And when I wanted to run, like, he's like, it's okay. It's okay. He just kept telling me, it's okay. You know, this is, this is the freedom step. It, it read it in the very beginning. This yes. is the freedom step. It frees us from, from, from all this, like, this, this, this stuff that's going on in our own minds. We're, I mean, I know we were all legends in our own minds, right? Yeah. Um, but, but the reality comes out. And, and when Christ, man, I'm, think, I'm thinking of... Uh, of being being renewed, the renewing of our mind, right? Yes. By the by, the washing of, of the His word. word for those of us who who have accepted Christ. Yeah. And I don't assume that everybody in this room has. That's why that's why I say that. I don't know who has, who hasn't. But we're sharing our our strength, hope, and experience as followers of Christ, as yeah. believers through yeah. the process of recovery. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, me personally, and I'll go on to say this: that I believe that when when we work these steps the way that they're designed by God to work, that we're going to enter into a relationship yes. with the Lord. Amen. I don't think that there's any other way. I mean, I, I don't know. There's no other way for well, me. When I read the, the 12 steps, I really believe that it's the sanctification process. Yeah. Amen. You know, and I want to be sanctified. Amen. The Bible tells us in, Amen. in Revelation that's chapter good. 3 that he chastens us. He disciplines us, right? So that's, that's what it is. He come knocking, right? 
Just, oh, he's going to open that door and he chastens us. He, re, he, he reproves us. And how does he do it? Through the word of God. He says, how to, does a young man cleanse his ways? By the washing of the word. That's what I want to do. I want to get up every day, just like I wash my body, right? Every single day. You got to wash your spirit with the word of God. You have to wash your spirit by fellowship with another b believer, by, by working your steps, by being able to have that conscious contact with God, by able to admit the nature of your wrongs, by doing a daily reprieve. These, all these things are such great things, and this is what keeps us in a place of humility because pride just wants to creep up on us, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. just even as men, I know like, you know, men just naturally struggle with pride. You know, just like you said, we want to have these like images, but God wants to, have, to keep us in a place of humility. humility. And when we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that's when he will exalt us and he gives us the power to be able to do that. So I always make sure that I'm mindful of that. That's when I wake up, I make sure I med meditate on the word, right? And that's, the scripture says that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water mm -hmm. that bring forth his fruit during his season. He says that your leaf shall not wither and everything you do shall have good success. How many people here want to have good success? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God a Let's give God a praise. Let's move forward to uh, some of the scriptures. If you want to start us off. The correlating scriptures of step five. Okay. These are some verses that concur with the need for sharing your fifth step with somebody. Psalm 38. God bless you. Verse 18. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. It's, it's, it's wild how we come into recovery and all of a sudden the things that didn't bother us before we did it because our, our spirit was severed, right? It's, it's, it's amazing how, how all of a sudden the things that we do, do now, they bother us, they convict us, yes. right? And uh, that's, that's the grace of God, yeah. wooing, us, wooing us towards him. Say, listen, you don't have to do that no more. You don't have to act out like that no more. I freed you. Don't, come, come, come out of the cell. Come out of the cell. Some of us are still in the corner of the cell, and the door is wide open. And we need to come out. Just come out. Praise God. When I look at this scripture, too, I think about if we regard iniquity in our heart, he doesn't hear our prayer. Right? I don't mm. regard any iniquity in my heart. Mm. You know, that, and, and the way when I think about that scripture, it really relates to reservations that I had, you know, and which actually led me out to my relapse because I knew that I, in my mind, I had, you know, some reservations, right? I mean, it was just, that's, that's why we really have to have an understanding. When you, when you don't take the time to really do this, then you're leaving yourself vulnerable. Mm. You're leaving yourself vulnerable to be able to be attacked because then you just slowly start to isolate. And it happens very slowly. It doesn't happen, you know, all of a sudden like, like that. It's just little, little compromises mm -hmm. causes mm -hmm. consequences yes. for those things. And then before you know it, boom, you know. Mm. Psalm 32, 5 through 7. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and you did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Wow. Therefore, let us all faithful for faithfully pray to you while you may be found surely the rise of the mighty waters will not reach them you are you are my mm. hiding place mm. you will protect me from the troubles and surround me with songs of deliverance mm. Go ahead. No. Uh, <clears throat> acts 19 18 many of those who believe now came and openly confessed what they had done. And there's a there's a scripture that, that I'm reminded of. I shared it with uh, with Angelina earlier that the the Bible I want to say doesn't tell us it promises us. I, I I believe that the word is are a lot of promises to us yes. that if we confess our sin one to another. And that's what happens in in the twelve step fellowships, right? Yeah. Even even it's, it's crazy, but even more so than it happens in church sometimes, if I could say that, that that in the fellowship we 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 we, we share and we're so open about our stuff and our junk and everything like that, and there's actually confession going on. Mm. But but for those of us that have Christ, we we can see what's what's actually happening. But we need to practice that inside inside the church walls too 
Amen. as well. But if we confess our sin one to another, have somebody that we can trust, a confidant, that we can trust, that we know cares for us, that won't judge us, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm going to jump down to, okay. yeah, that's the next scripture, actually. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, let's go over to 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, uh -huh. he is faithful. Faithful means he's going to do it every time. He is And just, which means he's justified to do it. And will forgive us of our sins and purify, purify us. us. Amen. There is no purification without a full you know, a full awareness, without a full releasing, right? If we're holding on to something... You know, then there's no purification from us. And then he'll, he purif purifies us from all unrighteousness. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 says, In him, in him, Jesus, and through faith in him, Jesus, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Freedom and confidence. Realize, and I had to realize this, God loves God loves you, period, end of story. There's nothing that we have done. There's nothing, and I know I've said this before, but this needs to be driven home to, to all of us. There's nothing that we've done. There's nothing that we can do that God would go, oh my God, I can't believe he just did that. She just did that. I can't believe it. Like God already knows, and he desires for us to dump this out Amen. so that we can be free and be purified from that unrighteous, unrighteousness that we, we all struggle with at times. Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no one comes unto the Father but through me. And that same spirit of adoption, just like he was sharing that he was drawn unto God. And I believe God is drawing someone here tonight. I believe God is drawing somebody online because the spirit is always actively moving. And as we're going to hear that and actually make and come to God. We don't like to end any meeting without giving everyone the opportunity to turn their life and their will over to the care of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we believe here that it is easy as A, B, and C. It is not only easy as A, B, and C, but it is so important for us to repent. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. It says, let the unrighteous man forsake his, his ways and his thoughts. Let us all return unto God. A, we admit that we are sinners. We admit the nature of ourselves, that we're sinners. Step one. B, we believe that God did something about our sin on Calvary. Past, present, and future sins. Step two. And three, we commit our lives and our will over to the care of God. And D, we do it today because tomorrow is never promised. Mm -hmm. If everybody could bow their heads and close their eyes, if you want to make that third step prayer and you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say a prayer like this. Father in heaven, Father in heaven. thank you for loving me. I admit that I am a sinner and that I have made mistakes. And I'm sorry. I believe that you did something about my sin. Through your son Jesus. Who died on the cross. So that I can be forgiven. Jesus. Come into my heart. I give you my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. With eyes still closed and heads still bowed. If anybody said that prayer with us tonight. Would you please raise your hand? I'm not going to call on you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you and be able to give you a Bible. Or if you're online and you've done that, also too, if anybody in your heart is just being pulled to rededicate their life, if they mm -hmm. feel like they have not been really seeking God and seeking His face each and every day, if they're not bringing their alabaster box to God, really just giving him your first fruits. If you want to do that today, would you just acknowledge that by raising your hand? I see the hand. All right, you may open your eyes. Now we're going to open up the meeting. Uh, we thank everybody that was online. Please like and share and follow us and so that we can share the message of recovery and the gospel.
Thank you, Kevin.